This video will provide information about plant hormones, the chemical compounds that coordinate growth, development, and responses to stimuli. Hormones have multiple effects depending on the site of action, their concentration, and developmental stage of the plants. For the purposes of this video, we will review the five most important plant hormones and their functions. The first and probably most famous plant hormone is indoleacetic acid, commonly known as auxin. This hormone is produced in apical meristems and young leaves. Auxin stimulates stem elongation, the formation of lateral roots, helps in developing fruits, and also functions in different tropism responses. Tropism is simply a growth response that results in plants curving towards or away from stimuli. Think about a sunflower and how it moves towards the sun. Because the stimulus is the light, this will be called phototropism. How does auxin promote plant growth? Auxin increases the activity of hydrogen pumps, therefore reducing the pH of the cell wall. A low pH causes expansions to separate microfibrils. These are shown in brown. And polysaccharides, shown in green. These polysaccharides are cleaved by loosening enzymes in the cell wall, and the loosening of microfibrils and increased water uptake increases turgor and causes the cell to elongate. The next group of hormones is cytokinins. Cytokinins are known as growth regulators and, as the name implies, they work by stimulating cytokinesis during cell division. Cytokinins are mainly producing roots and transported to other organs. They regulate cell division in shoots and roots as well as to promote movement of nutrients. Cytokinins are especially important for apical dominance, a term we introduced in chapter 35 during primary growth. Cytokinins antagonize or inhibit the action of auxins, reducing apical dominance and allowing axillary buds to grow and elongate. The next group of hormones are gibberellins. As with auxins, gibberellins are also produced at the meristems of apical buds, roots, and in developing seeds. These hormones are especially important for stem elongation and pollen development. Similar to auxins, gibberellins loosen cell walls and facilitate entry of expansing proteins, promoting elongation. In seeds, gibberellins stimulate the hydrolysis of starch and the production of sugars, so that they can be consumed during the formation and growth of new embryos. After seeds get water, gibberellins are released and they send signals to the outer layer of the endosperm, or seed coating. Then, enzymes are released to hydrolyze nutrients in the coating. Finally, sugars and other nutrients are absorbed during the growth of a seedling. The next hormone is abscisic acid. Contrary to other hormones we have discussed so far, abscisic acid, or ABA, slows growth. This means that this hormone inhibits the action of growth hormones. The main two effects of ABA is seed dormancy and drought tolerance. During seed maturation, ABA levels spike and this will inhibit germination until there are sufficient growth factors like water and light. In plants where ABA is absent, as shown in the corn image, germination is premature and coleoptiles will emerge even when seeds are still attached to fruits. Finally, we have ethylene. Ethylene is known to be a gaseous hormone and it is produced by most part of the plant. High concentrations of ethylene are seen during senescence and leaf abscission. Ethylene is primarily responsible for promoting ripening of many types of fruit and leaf abscission. So next time you think about the fall season, make sure you remember ethylene as the hormone causing all those leaves to detach from the trees. Ethylene is also responsible of a triple response, which involves slowing of stem elongation, stem thickening, and horizontal stem growth. This is especially important during germination as plants might encounter obstacles when emerging from the ground, so the triple response allows them to avoid obstacles and resume vertical growth. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in this video will be true no matter what biology class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Images and diagrams are from Campbell's Biology 11th edition unless otherwise stated. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services in our tutoring center, which is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You will find all of the details you need to know about these services in our website, which is www.baylor.edu forward slash tutoring. You can schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during any of our business hours. For many information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.